Good morning, everybody. It's Rhea with Passionate Paper Creations, and I'm here to do the third video for Connie Fong. And uh, it's early. I should have had this done yesterday, but yesterday was a very busy morning. B busy day, actually. So I'm going to do this first thing before I get my day started. Today's video, we are going to finish this image. We have the dress and the flowers to finish and a some of the background. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with the background. Um, typically, if you're going to do the background, um, if you're going to do any texturing of any kind, you should do that first. Yeah, I never do that. I also see that I didn't finish the hair here. So I will finish that before I do the final photo and um, put it up on the video. So I'm going to start with the dress. The dress, I'm going to use my... Where's my pen? I'm going to use the East 60s. I'm going to use, or the B60s, sorry, B60s. I'm only th on my second cup of coffee, so. Let's see. B63, B66, B69, B79. Then, um, if I want to add more contrast, I'm either going to use C5 or C7. The reason that I'm using C's is because these, uh, this color combo that I'm using here is um, a cool tone. Blues um, and the C's have a blue tint to them, um, a blue hue. So they will go well with any of the blues that you're that you want to deepen. Uh, grays are good for deepening colors. So um, the C's, like I said, have a blue tone to them. So I'm going to start with B63. And I'm going to map or put a coat down notice here how the bow goes in like a triangle that's how I'm going to color it so I'm put a little bit of shading in there this this bow is behind this bow, so this bow will have more of a shadow. This bow on top, so the top of this bow is going to be the lightest. I might eat, we're going to leave white there. You've got a fold here. Again, you have another triangle. So I'm going to color along that. And then the bottom of the bow is going to have a little bit of shading. Notice I'm leaving a lot of white that's going to close in. This is going to be colored in. I'm going to leave a little bit of white there. So we'll start with the bow. Make that a little bit wider. Now these colors, I'm going to go, remember, we go from light to dark. Light, dark, medium, medium, and light. So it's going to be B63, which I just did. Then I'm going to use B79. Then I'm going to go to B69. B66, back to B63. And then we're on these colors, we're probably going to repeat 
to make more contrast. That's when I'm going to add in my C's and figure out which one of these C's I'm going to use and go from there. Remember that I, being left-handed, and I have figured out that I work best towards myself. So I have a very fine line. Here the bow is going to come in. Now this kind of, this here is going against the light source. Because remember, we have all, I've always said on this image that the light source is coming from this direction. But I want the bow to have um, the look of a bow. Um, with some pleats and folds in it. I want to show you how to do that. Um, bows are a little different sometimes depending on the shape, where they're placed. Um, the artist has given us a very nice bow to work with. So I want to take advantage of that. So I'm kind of breaking the rules here on the bow itself. Notice I'm not going directly to this line because I need to come underneath. So I need that separation between the two folds because this fold needs to come on, stay on top where this is underneath the bow, the inside of the bow. That was 79. Now 69. Start blending that out with straight lines. And here, I'm going with the curve. Each color is extending, like always. And I'm going right over that 79. Now I'm at 66. Blending in a straight line just means going over it. Over that line a few times, those colors will blend together very nicely. in the bottom part of the bow. Go back to 63. Now I don't want to go too far back because I don't want to displace because there's with 63 with three being the last number, that means that it's a lighter color with less pigment in it. Less pigment means that there's more alcohol and it will displace the darker colors. So when you end with a much lighter color from a start with a nine and end with a three, 
your 3 is going to displace your 9s. So that's where we're going to have to repeat. So I'm going to use a 7, C7, here underneath. Very little. Up against the body, then with 69, forget 79, we've already done. I'm not going to go back there. I'm going to go over that C7. That is going to take the gray out. I'm going to blend, blend it right there on the paper. And I just deepened. The 69. Now I'm back to 66. And I can go a little bit wider. This is going to self blend pretty much because there's a lot more ink. And I want the folds of the bow to be more soft than stark and very streaky. Now I'm back to 63, which is my lightest color. And I'm just lightly finishing it up. I keep in the angle of the lines. Just a little bit of white there. Mm, I think I'm going to leave the white. Now we're going to the chest of the dress. Um, I'm going to show you how to do dark to light. Some people color that way. That's fine. I do it as well at times depending on what it is. This is such a small area and I want some detail in here. Seventy nine. Now she this part is furthest from the light, so it is going to be darker. Barely touching the paper. Sixty-three. And where's sixty-six? Is what I need now. And then 63, 
Remember how I told you this is going to displace some of the color? So I'm going to lighten this up here in the middle. Just like that. C7. Let's deepen some of those folds, pleats that are the artist who gave us. Back to 69. Let's take some of the gray out, add the blue back in. And that's her dress. Now for the flowers. I'm going to be using RV52, RV63, RV66, RV69, and RV99. When you get into, let's start with the smaller flowers. When you get into small areas, dotting is an easier way to color, and an easier way to leave white on the ends. This is 52. Getting a little bit bigger here on this flower. This is behind the hair, so that's not going to have any white on it. So now I have 63 closer to the center I'm just going to do a little outline leaving the center open whoops Then 63 would be my next lightest color for this. Blend that up. Dot that color here. Blend that circle.
And then with 52, we'll go blend that again. It'll be lightest on the ends. And I'm just doing little dots. I better do this one. Pink, pink, blue. Okay. Mm, 66. 63. Back to 52. Okay, now we're going to come down. We're going to leave the other ones. Uh, this one and this one will probably make blue. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use 63, 66, and 69 in the B family. So 63 is first. That's not going to have any white in it. That won't have any white in it because it's shadowed between these two, and neither will these. 66 around the center. Whoops, 69 around the center, sorry. 66. See how a little bit of the dark color goes a really long way? That's important to know. How far is your color that you're using going to go? That way you don't get too dark when you're coloring. Sixty six. That was sixty nine. Back to sixty three. Okay. Now we're going to use sixty. 63, 66, and We're just going to do a basic blend on these flowers. Nothing really special. Leaving the tips. White. The centers flick out. A little sixty nine around 
the inside flower bud then 66 back to your light these colors take a little bit to blend hmm, I should have made those colors blue Oh, nope, because they were against the dress. <laughs> so they would have been lost. Ah, I have an idea. Okay. Sixty-nine. Sixty-three. Sixty-six. That was sixty-six. Sorry. And this is sixty-three. Moving on to the next, let's do her hair ones. This is 63. This is closest and the light's shining on it. So I'm not going to use the darkest color. I'm only going to use two colors here on that one. Um, I'm going to do, I think it will be easier to blend. Try this. We're going to do, we're going to do light, medium, dark, and back to light. So here's, I did 63. This is 66. Let me take 63, blend this out. Sometimes when you have a really dark color, this method can also help. There's a lot of ink. So, like I've said before, it's hard to color and talk at the same time. When you, the more ink you have on Copic Expressive paper, it will start to self-blend. So my thought process is this is going to blend easier. And it is. Blending like butter, barely touching it. Now I'm going back to the light. Okay. Yeah, that was much easier. Okay, 52, 62. 63. Oh my gosh. I need a third cup of coffee. Hmm. 
wanted to do this first thing this morning because by the time I download, put it through the computer, and then upload it, it takes about almost three hours to complete the process. So I thought I would get this done first thing this morning. And it is 8 eight nineteen here. I've already had two phone calls that I've missed. This is the medium color, 66. I'm going to blend that out with 63. I'm kind of dotting, if you can see here, because I'm getting into smaller areas. Remember, I have one more step to do. Now with 69. This is on, this is the light side, this is the darkest side. Not that you can really tell. I tend to lose light sources. Um, but you know what? That's okay. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. But I am going to attempt to make this darker and regain some of that. We should just color and not worry about light source. Coloring is fun. As long as you get your depth that you need, you're fine. Why worry about it? That's my thought. Ooh, okay. Now, we have the inside of the petals here. A little bit of 66. Leaving white on the ends. Leaving the middle open for right now. Now, uh, on the um, tips of those flowers, I'm going to take B60,
and I'm working it into the white area and once again because the color is in the six family but it has a zero so it has very little pigment in it and a higher alcohol content look at it how it is blending like a blender pen but it's leaving a hint of color so what I'm doing is I'm basically tying everything in with the dress and I went out of the lines there so I'm trying to use this just I don't want to scrub too much because I'll lose my flower and notice how I'm pushing the color back into the flower coming in from the opposite direction oops I forgot to do those centers that gives them a nice little Do that on the tips of these as well. I like how that looks. It may or may not show up in the photos. It, I, I'm don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video. Hopefully you can. Okay. There is 66. Where did I miss the center of those flowers? Where'd they go? Where are you? There you are. Mmm. Let's do this on the center of the flowers as well and soften that look. It will all come together. I tend not to pre-plan my project if it doesn't involve paper. Now with 79, I'm going to dot the inside of the pink. If it's a large circle, I'm going to do a half crescent. In the center, we're going to do a dark pink on the big flowers here. And then with 79, I'll go and let that dry. I wanted to let it dry so it wouldn't blend. Seventy nine on that one, or ninety nine RV ninety nine. I'm so sorry. And dot uh, and sixty six, and we'll put a white little dot in there. Seventy 
79. And then I'm going to take 63. Finish off those circles. Deepen up those centers. Now, RV zero zero zero. Let me see. Nope. We're going to use RV000 on the blue flowers. Where we left white, just like we did the pink flowers, so that we have a little bit of a consistency. And then on the dress where we left white, on the highlights, I'm going to, you don't have to. Okay, just simple, simple, simple background. I'm going to take my blender pen, make sure it's nice and wet. Whoops, I'm doing this backwards. I need to start from over here. <laughs> Told you I need more coffee. And in certain areas, I want the color that I'm going to use to stop. So I'm using my blending solution to create a barrier. And I'm going to use the very lightest colors. And to make sure it's really saturated because I do want them to stop. Now I'm going to take the B60. And flick a little bit of color out. Because this is so light, these are wonderful with your lightest colors to do this. <sighs> Don't do this technique all the way around an image and create because what you do is you create a halo I strongly think that your background should be an accent to an image if I were to do this all the way around then I, ha I don't have I lose some kind of depth to it. I lose some kind of personality to my work. Um, so unless you're going to do the entire page background, that's fine. 
but if you're going to take a color and you're going to put a little bit of color and make a halo effect around the entire image as a background, I don't personally recommend doing that. Oops. Now we're going to create a barrier here. And And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to use that V000 for a little bit of pink. See how it pulls out the brown, so you have to be careful. My strokes are going to get lighter and shorter as I go down here. It's going to have an ending point, so I'll end it up there. Put a blue, purple to it here and there. You can add multiple colors in with it. And a little bit of pink over here if you want. They'll blend together. I'm going to take my blender marker scrub away some of the streakiness let me even go over a little bit over the color it's not going to completely make it go away it'll just soften it And then let's do a little around. Actually, we're going to do a little bit of blue right in here. This is just a dead white space and it's closed up. Perfect. A touch pink in there. Do this little section here by the dress. We're going to stop there. Go up here. Pink down here against the dress. my blender marker again and repeat the process. Um, I liked the uh, softer look that that gave.
If I wanted to put a little texture with fabric and blending solution, I could. I'm not going to on this one. I want to keep it soft. And that's it. So last night, Connie contacted me, Connie Fong, and we're going to sweeten the pot on this one. We're, in addition to three winners winning one free image, we're going to add another three winners and one, those three winners each will get a $10 gift certificate to the Connie Fong store. Yes, indeed. So make sure to leave a comment on either video one, two, or three and subscribe to my YouTube channel share it share the one of the, one of the three videos along the way through your social media and uh we'll see you see you around if you want if you're not a member of passionate paper creations and friends facebook group let me tell you it's a fun place to be we have a lot of sponsors and a great time thanks again thanks for watching and i'll see you soon